So this is corals, and we've reached the section of mushroom animals and corallomorphs. Okay. So all mushroom animals should be attached to a rock or a base when purchased. They can expand dramatically when placed in low current locations in the tank. Iodine is essential for proper coloration and for maximum expansion and reproduction. These are um, hardy corals can be kept under virtually all light conditions, and, uh, although direct metal halide light and strong current will prevent full expansion. So no metal halide. The mushrooms, although mushroom animals have traditionally been considered to be benign and harmless, Recent evidence suggests that they actually can injure uh, corals that they directly contact. Even the notoriously aggressive Galaxia is not immune. Uh, oddly enough, these are non-aggressive, non-stinging corals with no known chemical release. Therefore, the mechanism for this passive aggressiveness is not known. Lighting 2-6, water L, aggressive L, difficulty 2. Very beautiful, dark purple, violet color. Um, there are more examples and um, variations. They look like flower flowers with wide petals. Uh, it says there are many colors of mushrooms. A few typical color variations are here, and the colors are found in combination with other physical characteristics, like um, pattern of uh, patterns in size and surface texture, and it depends on the actual uh, specimen. Co the most common co colors are blue, red, green, and purple. Um, the, um, I don't see any blue. I guess there's some like, blue mixed in. Mm, there's greenish and purple. It's very um, vivid. They, they, their colors also may change when introduced to new conditions. So very lovely. So they are very lovely and uh, they're not very um, toxic. Okay. And there's some other examples. Some of the patterns found on mushrooms can be quite striking. Stripes, speckles, rings, patches commonly occur in their variation. These are more speckled, purple, white. These have spots. Cool looking, and these are striped. And they look like mushrooms, actually. So speckled or mottled. The texture of mushroom animals is quite diverse. Some have long protuberances that look like hairs. Others have bumps, swords, uh, fuzz, and folds. 
or smooth surfaces. Um, textures may change from day to day or they may uh, become uh, more or less pronounced depending from day to day. This is a foliar fuzzy and hairy So those are the variations. Excuse me. Uh, I kind of like the smooth. I don't know. They look like flowers, and they're very pretty. They look very delicate, like um. So, the frilly is like smooth but just uh, more curvy. Okay. This is a bubble. Some mushroom animals uh, do not go flat against the surface to which they're attached. Many have raised stalks, a round bubble-like cap, or folds that elevate their surface. The Caribbean bubble mushroom, shown here, prefers low light to retain beautiful colors. They can be up to four inches in diameter. Named Disosoma sanctitomus, and it says when a bubble mushroom is stressed or injured or ha unhappy, it will commonly expel its innards. Low light and good water is recommended to help it recover. So, good water and low light. Umbrella mushroom, Atlantic Coralomorph, uh, is uh, an attractive species from the Caribbean. It's in several different colors and can be four inches in diameter, up to. It re reproduces by division at the foot. Name this is Soma neglecta. Umbrella mushroom. Wide, uh, very beautiful colors. Uh, reddish, greenish colors. A little bit of blue and uh, ivory. Looks like jewels. And this one as well, light pink. It's very pretty. This is uh, giant variations. Elephant ear and giant mushrooms are so named for their size. As many color and texture variations exist among these giants as in any other type of mushroom animal. Rhodactus can eat food including fish by producing a bubble trap on the surface. Uh, it, it may swell out substantially after feeding. Some clownfish will accept giant mushrooms of the Rhodactus genus as surrogates for their host animal. Uh, so here is so shown the giant cup or elephant ear scientific name. Amplexidixis. Amplexidiscus. Giant cup in fully open state. This is called elephant's ear named Redactus. Okay. And then this is called giant brown or Redactus as well. And this is giant mushroom named Redactus as well. Very pretty, uh, translucent, uh, white. Violet, pink, blue, very light, light green. It's quite lovely. Called giant mushroom. Okay. And we got the last bunch here, the cordia. 
Recordea is found only in Florida and Caribbean waters. It's a small to medium-sized mushroom characterized by unique contrasting round raised dots um, across the surface. Colors of Recordea can vary from orange to blue, green, brown, purple. They can lose um, the bright fluorescent colors under intense sunlight or lighting. Recordea is still legally available from Florida waters, but the rock it attaches to is a knot. Therefore, collectors are now shipping individual polyps instead of Recordea rock. So the name is Recordea, Recordea Florida. It says the species of Actinodiscus from the Indo-Pacific and African coast is imported uh, and and um, despite it's imported as Recordea and despite an obviously close resemblance the species is not Recordea but a variation of the fuzzy thicker texture. This is a Florida mushroom Forked tentacle, scientifically named Bucis soma, Carl Granny, and this is a flower anemone. It is closely related to anemones that, uh, rather than a mushroom, and it may be the true link between the species. An active feeder, the colorful mushroom remains stationary, but is taxonomically classified as an animal. Animals are related to corals because they're in a vertebrate that contains zooxanthellae in their tissues. Many beautiful species exist. Identifying these creatures as well as other common reef invertebrates included in the next um, um In um, the next practical guide that they may make, so this is called flower anemone. is a genetic link between corals and the true animals. No, come here. So, <laughs> give me the feather. Okay, and we're gonna end it right there. Thank you guys so much, and we're wrapping up the book. So there were all these corals that we did go through already, and in this um, particular um, book. And then uh, there's some suggested readings, reef coral identification, marine invertebrates, Indo-Pacific coral reef field guide, um, the reef aquarium, tropical Pacific invertebrates, corals of Australia and the Indo-Pacific. A field guide to coral reefs. The Greenpeace Book of Coral Reefs. Coral Reefs, uh, a global view by Diver Les Holiday. A Natural History of the Coral Reefs, Marine Atlas. Uh, Manual of Marine Invertebrates. Marine Invertebrates and Plants of the Living Reef. Dynamic Aquaria, Building Living Ecosystems, Encyclopedia of Marine Invertebrates. So those are some suggested readings. So thank you all. My page, I just probably said it in this. Facebook.com is also. And it says, Reef Keepers Arm Coral. <laughs> Compulsive Tank Organizer. This coral is never found in the wild, but it is an extremely common sight in home reef aquariums. It comes in several different colors and unlimited variations in hue and shading. Obviously, this is a joke. <laughs> it is a hermatypic and must be fed constantly, as would be suggested by the long, finger-like polyps. Although few specimens prefer vegetable diet, most prefer regular feedings of fresh shrimp, key lime pie, Caribbean, 
and margarita. This call can be the most difficult of all to care for as it is highly impulsive and unpredictable, especially the male of the species. It's always very expensive to maintain, a fact that must be considered carefully before committing to many years of care. One thing is for certain, the Reef Keeper's Arm needs lots of TLC, tender living care, especially when some the sump overflows and floods the living room downstairs. <laughs> Scientific name Homo sapiens, subspecies Reefa coriensis. So, some reviewers have suggested that this actually may not be a coral at all, but simply the arm of reef keepers everywhere who spent way too much time rearranging their live rock. We will leave that up to the taxonomists to decide. Lighting needs medium. Colors tend to change drastically under varying lighting conditions. Water flow. Reef keepers may need 